Hello everyone, Ali here. So I've been playing Skyweaver for a few months and I've come across this uh, mid-range Horic Strength and Heart deck that I absolutely love and I keep finding myself wanting to play it over and over. So I'm going to talk about the deck, the mulligans, the game uh, strategy, and then show you some games. And I just wanna say if you are watching this video, thank you so much. Uh, I've just started a new YouTube channel dedicated to Web3 Gaming. So it's the very beginning stages of this channel. So if you are watching, you're one of the first viewers and I just appreciate it and uh, would love if you consider subscribing for more Web3 gaming content. All right, let's get started. Okay, so as I said, it is a mid-range deck, but can definitely lean to the control side of things depending on the matchup. It's super flexible and it's essentially a graveyard value generation deck. So it's very important to pay attention to your graveyard, know what's at the bottom, know what's at the top and things like that. The fundamental part of this deck is understanding when you need to be the aggressor and when you are trying to control the game. So it's a deck that can be a lot of different things and I think that's why I like it so much. So let's go over the mulligans. The thing about the mulligans with this deck is that it totally depends on the type of path that you are attempting to take with it. So depending on your selection, the best mulligan is going to vary. It's not just like, oh, you absolutely keep this. Uh, maybe a few cards, yes, um, like Ether, Lemur here, and uh, Old Foggy, I would probably always keep those, but cards that complement them will be situational. So let me explain. Foggy is your uh, ramp for the deck, gaining an empty mana crystal similar to something like Wild Growth in Hearthstone. There are two combinations that you can play with him early. Uh, one is the Molten Heart, so give target ally plus 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 one plus one and trigger its death effects so you can get an extra ramp out of it. That's if it lives and stays on the board. And then the other option is to Phoenix Plume. So return your top dead unit to hand, trigger its death effect as well. So the fact that both of these options exist for Old Foggy makes it difficult for your opponent to decide, hmm, do I wanna kill it or do I wanna uh, leave it alive, right? Because you could um, make the choice of both. So if I had Old Foggy in my hand, I would potentially consider keeping one of those to get an extra uh, trigger off of Foggy's Death Rattle. Now, if I knew that I was facing a deck that was, you know, a big value match, I would probably want to save something like the Molten Heart or the Fe uh, Phoenix Plume for a little bit of a higher value card than Foggy because one extra mana in the really long games won't necessarily do all that much. Unless, of course, your hand is full of seven and nine drops and you need to get to them as fast as possible. So it depends. Just another thing to mention about Old Foggy is that, you know, he can be quite a good value card. Uh, his attached spell, the three mana Spore Blast, deals one damage to all enemy units with Wither and adds a Doom Shroom to your hand. And that is the five mana three six with Guard and Death, deal one damage to enemy units. So. Uh, you know, if in those matchups that you really want to squeeze all the value, uh, Foggy can be pretty cool for that. Ether Lemur here is another card that I would absolutely keep in the mulligan every time. Uh, he's great for early tempo with uh, the fact that it has dash and it has a summon ability. If your hand has a seven cost or higher card in your hand, you gain plus two plow power and you add an ether whale to your hand. So it becomes a three, three with dash being able to answer, um, you know, an early unit if need be. And then it's an incredible uh, late game value generation card. The ether whale is a nine cost. The Aether Whale is a nine cost earth spell. Draw and summon two units, attach roots to each unless it's uh, earth. So this can be, you know, a big bomb in pulling out some really expensive uh, units from your deck. And again, in Skyweaver, remember that if you run out of things or you run out of units in your deck to get pulled from this card, cards are conjured. Um, so you essentially can never run out of things or like run out of value with a card like this. Now, because of that part of its summon ability, if your hand has a seven cost or higher card, I would keep a high cost card in the mulligan to trigger this effect because it's so good. Jar of Souls is probably the best uh, seven or the most ideal seven cost to keep in the hand um, to combo with Ether Lemur. So summon your top three dead units as tutus with guard, attach days to them. 
It's just really good as a mid-game bomb to bring back some extra value from the graveyard, and it's not too expensive, so keeping it in your mulligan doesn't feel too bad. And again, in the slower matchups, uh, the ether lemur triggers are super important because you're just trying to squeeze as much value as you possibly can out of your cards. Moving on to other parts of the mulligan, I always like to keep a removal card, like just one. Um, sometimes you have no choice and you have to keep more because it's what the game offers you, but it's nice to just have something, especially if you don't know exactly what your opponent is playing. Uh, but, you know, depending on which removal you keep is kind of important because some are better in the late game uh, versus better in the early game. So Hyper Beam is an example here of one that would be probably better in the early game. Uh, do damage to target unit equal to the size of the enemy's hand. Obviously, the enemy's hand is usually bigger in the earlier stages of the game. Sometimes it's not, depends, it's situational, but it's nice to get value out of this early when you can. Um, something like something like Unstoppable Chop, attach silence to target unit, do four damage to it, is probably a removal card that I wouldn't want to keep early because silence, the silence ability can be a lot more valuable in the later stage of the game. So I probably wouldn't want to keep that one if I had the choice. And then generally speaking, it's not a bad idea to keep early units that you can play. So something like the Sonic Jammer, uh, Scarab Bot is great, uh, Cleo, Eclipse, uh, things like that. Opal, uh, Opal Golem is another one which I would keep, but it feels worse if you don't have uh, other units in your hand to get value off of its death rattle, right? Get the left and rightmost units in your hand guard and minus one cost. So if that doesn't have a, a target, it feels bad. Now in the slower matchups, again, it's all situational. A lot of the cards are pull from the bottom of the deck, right? So Ancient's Rise here is summon your bottom three dead units, attach sealed to them. In the slow control matchups, pulling Opal Golem, you know, versus something bigger like Chromiosaur at the bottom of your deck um, could be bad, right? So there are situations in which you don't want to get these things out. Like Ether Lemur, always you'd want to um, pull out from the bottom or top of your deck, but you might want to hold back certain cards if you need to get value off of those graveyard summoning cards. Other things for the mulligan, I know I'm kind of explaining strategy while also talking about the mulligan. Hopefully it's not too confusing. Uh, Molten Heart is kind of a weird one. Could be really good for early things like Old Foggy and stuff like that, but you definitely need a target with it. So it's sort of self-explanatory, right? This card can be used for ramping early, value generation, like say you want to trigger Eclipse and draw a dark and light card. So getting card advantage on your opponent or late game you can use it to trigger the draco mantium so dust your top three dead metal cards to give your hero armor giving your hero hero armor is really clutch sometimes in the late game so you can wait to use it for something like that to like make sure that you get the armor instead of uh, the draco mantium getting dusted before you know the death effect can trigger or something like that molten heart is also really good with the scarab bot here three mana two two with the death discard two units from your deck return your highest cost dead unit to hand so that can be really good at like thinning your deck out and like getting high value cards into your hand or you know if it pulls two big ish units with this and you know one of them gets in the graveyard then you could potentially cheat out a large uh, unit with something like the plume you know maybe it puts it back to your hand but you get to trigger the death rattle of you know the draco mantium or or something along those lines so those are some uh, key cards for the mulligan or just like strategies that you should be thinking about. You can kind of see how uh, every game is going to be different based on the combination of early game stuff that you want to be going for. So that's the reason why I like this deck so much is that it's very flexible. Okay, so now moving on to just some play style things. I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but you know, paying attention to your graveyard is very important because again, you've got things like second chance, um, summons your top dead unit, uh, ancients rise, jars of souls, you know, that are gonna pull units into the battlefield depending on if it's, if a unit is on the bottom or the top of your deck. So, you know, it's just about knowing 
the overall strategy. Maybe you hold back a cheaper card because you really need to summon something high value in a control matchup, or you really need a guard unit against an aggro deck and you make sure that that's in the proper ordering in your graveyard. So that's really the main strategy to be thinking of when you're playing this deck. The end game can come down to a few different situations, but one of the big bombs of the deck is the BFR 9000. So its summon and glory effect is give units in your hand and other ally units plus two plus one. So sometimes you'll just naturally have built a board with something like Fairness pulling out four fours um, or that Ether Whale uh, card from the Lemur. But oftentimes it comes from the Undragon here, which is summon three Zomboids with guard, right? So that's going to flood the board with little one twos that ping the enemy hero. And so, you know, in the really long controlling matchups, if you can find a way to summon Undragon a few times, like filling the board with one twos and then getting value off of this uh, buff card, that might be one of your best win conditions for the deck. Something to say about Light Ranger, I generally in a slower matchup will not tempo the Light Ranger out because it's so valuable that his summon ability is to pull a light card from your deck and attach it to him. So if it dies, you're gonna lose out on the value before you get to cast that light card. If you don't have the second chance in your hand already, it's always gonna pull the second chance first. So that would be a turn nine play or a nine mana play to do those two together. And then, you know, it'll pull Ancient's Rise or Cause Wrath after, or if you already have cast the second chance. So, you know, if I'm against an aggro deck, and you know you need the health because it again it heals your hero equal to the cost of the spell that it draws you can just kind of tempo this out but i like to be kind of greedy with it if i can some things to keep in mind is that chomp soul drain sunder and cause wrath all can do damage to the hero's face as spells so just something to keep in mind you don't want to miss a lethal if you realize that um, some of those spells can actually go face and just a random shout out to Chromiosaur. Love this card. Um, he's got a chomp attached to him. Also dash and just makes all of your expensive stuff cheaper. So uh, it's one of my favorite cards in the deck. I think that is enough to get you going. Talked about the mulligans and some general strategy. Again, it's a deck that plays differently every single time that I play it. And I think that's why I love it so much. So. If you listen to all of this and now you're gonna to get to some games, tell me what you think of the deck. And if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up or let me know what you thought of it in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the games and I'll see you in the next one. Nice, we got Fogey, old Fogey again. Lemur is busted, love this card. But we have to keep a card that costs seven or more. And this is probably the best one to keep. Actually, there's, yeah, there's Cause Wrath. Well, yeah, like if we wanted to ramp, I could keep this, right? I could coin the Foggy out and then return it, trigger it. Also, Chromiosaur is just nice. I guess, like, I don't know the matchups. Like, this is a strength deck. I don't know if that's gonna be fast and I need the extra ramp. Second Chance is also just, like, amazing too. But I'm probably gonna want more than If I have this in my hand, I probably want three minions in the graveyard though, because this does three. Well, is the game, I could go uh, ramp, ramp, foggy. <sighs> I don't like it. I guess it depends on how fast they are, because again, if it died, I could return the top dead unit and trigger the wild growth effect. Could just play this and kill that unless it has armor it does have armor so armor blocks um every one point of damage so this is going to become a three three so it wouldn't kill that so we shouldn't bump so if it's going glowing blue oh god If it's glowing blue here, it's got armor. If it's purple here, it's got wither. Well, methinks we are in trouble. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, I think our best bet is to just ramp like we, as best as we can. This will die again, and then we could second chance, and then I guess we'd have eight mana, but we're still we're still struggling. Straight up gambling. Uh, why would it be gambling? Uh, that's interesting. So if we wanted to play Jar of Souls, we could. This will put stuff into our graveyard, so we could go for it. I definitely like that. I think instead of playing the second chance, and we could also get the foggy out and clear that. Maybe we pull something big. This would have to die though. Um, I think we're just going to pass. I don't really want to throw this away. Unless it gets dusted. I guess I would be... Dusted is removed from the game. Is it worth doing that? I don't think Strength will have that many ways to dust a card. Maybe. We'll see. About the pay to potentially win sellable cards. I mean... I mean, if you're good at the game... I mean, you win some- if you get a win, you get a silver card. If you get two wins, you get two silver cards, and then if you get three wins, you get a gold and a silver card. Uh, okay, let's just... bop that, and then I suppose play this. Chomp does six damage, so we're not really gonna be able to kill that. Okay, fairness. It would have been nice if that had been in the deck, but that's okay. Uh, that'll do three to this. Kind of like punching some damage on it before... Maybe they have an AoE or something. Maybe just pass. Dude, this one thing has been alive the whole game. Oh god. So this will pull out uh, two units from the deck. Uh, roots? Oh! Okay, Cause Wrath is pretty sweet. It's three damage to everything. And it dusts them if they die. Eight mana. Um... It's kind of awkward. Like, I wouldn't mind rootsing everything so they couldn't attack. Maybe just play this and then hope to get there at this next turn. What do we have left in the deck? We've got the BFR. That could be cool. Eclipse. We just play this. Maybe. I guess these have armor though, so these aren't really doing any damage to them, unfortunately. But they are a bunch of guard units, so at least I'm not getting smacked down by these things. So okay, if I cause wrath, it also withers, so it reduces the attack of everything. I think that's probably the best. What is another option? That technically would clear that, the chomp. I could do five and five and try and save the cause wrath. That clears that, right? Yep. And then I could do this, and then I could just take this trade. Okay. I don't know, the cause wrath is like our only AoE in the deck, really. So maybe we just hold on to it. Now, if they buff these things past two, again, they've got armor, so this will actually clear them right now, but as soon as they get to three, it won't, and that'll be annoying. Goodbye, chat, or goodbye, Sea Wing. Sorry, I read your message. <laughs> I'm still staying here for a little while longer. Okay, we've got a... Leo, a Sonic Jammer, and the big guy still left in the deck. I kind of want to cast this. So we get another bottom dead unit. So that would be Foggy. I feel so stupid for calling him Foggy. God damn it. This would be another Root Hog summoning here. Let's just, let's just go here. 
get the big BFR. Nice. But they've got roots. So, but that's fine. I don't think I want to trigger this death effect. Skyweaver. I am at 16 without a guard in front of me. This So this has lifesteal, but lifesteal only works if you have face. But that had guard and shield on it, so I don't know if there was a way for us to get through that with playing the... This has a summon ability, meaning when it comes into play, or enters the battlefield to give everything plus two, plus one. And then it's also got the same effect for glory. So the glory effect triggers when you hit the uh, opponent's hero. So if we can connect to the dome, then these will get buffed. What's up, Pooza? How's it going? Okay. I guess if this dies, we could return... Oh, never mind. Uh, how much damage is that? 15. Well, after we buff, it'll be a lot. So... It also buffs in the hand as well as the battlefield, so we can attack first and just see how much damage that is. Uh, 13, 14, 15, 16. This cannot go face. Uh, this also goes face. Damn, I got hyped. Thought that pin tournament is for Skyweaver. No, but I, I do want to run some Skyweaver tournament soon, though. So I don't know exactly when that'll be, but it probably won't be that far away, actually. Um, I don't know my about my ability to cast Skyweaver quite yet, but I will try my best. But that's definitely something on the horizon that we want to do. I mean, the lemur's insane, right? But that means I have to keep this? I guess that's okay, maybe. I like draw and sunder or hyper beam, honestly. Oh my God, Santa Claus is a Christmas cat pun. I can't believe how long that, that's, we should have both got that. Meowry Christmas. Wait, I think I might have a prime sub under my chair or something. Oh, that's nice if you do give me yours, thank you. Okie dokie. So this is stealth, right? So we can bop it. Bring it out of stealth, because things are stealthed until you damage their hero. And then we can, um... Make this trade. Daz Ladoran, thank you very much for the five months. Hope you're having a good day. Thank Found you, thank it. you. And for the using your prime sub on me, I appreciate that a lot. God damn, I should have used the... Uh, kept the Sunder instead of this. Because this only do four, and it would have done five, because it had guard. Well... Three, four, five. I guess I can just strike down. That's fine. And trade. I could also just play this. That's probably better. That's definitely better. Foggy. We are gonna shuffle. Oh, and you also don't burn cards in Skyweaver. They just get shuffled back into your deck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, top dead unit, so that'd be the opal golem. God, I hate the opal golem, dude. I, I think I just don't want the opal golem in this deck. I hate pulling it out of the graveyard. I can't shoot that, unfortunately, because it's got armor for three. I could get the chromiosaur down right now. Hmm. If it dies, then I can bring him back. Bows. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, you do have to create a wallet, um, but it makes it very self-explanatory. You can just sign up with email or Facebook or Discord or Gmail. Uh, I've been told to not sign up with Discord. Like, it's not as great. So just use your email, I think. But yes, it does make, it does generate a wallet for you. Okay, so I kind of want to get the Chromiosaur down. Like, I could just bop it and trade and go for it again. I also could do the Eclipse and then strike down. 
that 3-3, three, three, but then I'm not bringing the Chromiosaur back with this. I think it's fine to just do this. Chromiosaur is making our um, really expensive stuff cheaper. You can win this. I believe I can win this too. Do you think you'll play Raynaud's Bazaar? Maybe. I certainly will take a look at it, and if it looks like my style, I will try it out. Yeah, it's not really a card game, right? I, I need to honestly know a bit more about it. So we haven't really gotten the foggy down. We've got the lemur, the scarab bot, and the opal golem in the bottom. Could do the bop here and hit use the strike down. Just get the foggy developed. It's more of an auto battler. I mean, I do like auto battlers. I think I'm gonna put the eclipse down so we can draw. And then bop here. Wait, this will definitely do three, right? Yeah, okay. Trade here and get Should I be killing that thing? Nah. Gain health equal to target ally unit. Okay. Well, they only have got one card in the hand, so I'm not too stressed. That's got barrier, so again, that's like the vine shield, but for spells. So unfortunately, I can't just hit that for six right now without like getting through it another way. Um, This does have dash, so I could just trade there. I don't have a return top. Actually, just kidding. Jar of Souls is top. Fuck yeah, we should totally do that. I'm just gonna punch face. Honey Badger don't give a shit. That- Oh, is that fate? I'm sorry, I thought that was barrier. Bait and fair- Bait and farrier, Jesus. Fate and barrier look so similar. It's fine. Honestly, I like the BFR play better anyway, because now we can Jar of Souls and bring it back. I just said Bait and Farrier. Are you kidding me? They only come back as tutus, though. Do we still like doing that? Yes, I think so. I did reference Honey Badger. Mirrors with, minions with zero attack can go face. Yeah, you, minions with zero attack you can attack with. They just won't deal any damage. So it's kind of cool. Like if you have your foggy down or whatever, and you just like want to ramp with the death rattle effect, you can just throw it in. Okay, well, don't think that one was too difficult, but it's okay. Yeah, I was calling it foggy. I feel Mason was also calling it foggy too, though. So we were, you know, GG. We got there.